The fastest present, becoming Egyptian in the 20th century, is a fortress display. It's the first major output of the Modern Egypt project, which has started at the British Museum in 2016. Uh, within uh, two years, a collection of over 1,000 objects was gathered um, from markets, from uh, um, private collections uh, in Egypt, and these objects range from uh, everyday items, ephemera, film posters, uh, basically objects of everyday use. The British Museum has always collected not only the past, but also the contemporary world. Today it is known for its very powerful Egypt collection, um, which takes us way back into the past. So we felt we should address anew the question of what does modern Egypt look like? How can we present, how can we make modern Egypt present in the collections? Highlighting how Egypt has come into its own in the 20th century. The display focuses on uh, the emblem of Benk Misr, which was founded in 1920 uh, as one of the outcomes of the 1919 revolution in Egypt against British occupation. And its emblem features a profile view of Cleopatra, who was the final, the last pharaoh of ancient Egypt. And she's wearing a crown of lotus flowers, a symbol, an ancient Egyptian symbol of rebirth and renewal. Um, the remaining items and objects in the display really showcase how modern Egyptians utilized um, signs and symbols and imagery from ancient Egypt in order to construct a modern identity, particularly through branding. Uh, so many of the consumer goods in the display are really meant for everyday consumption for everyday Egyptians. I had these amazing collection of architecture drawings of uh, Abdin Palace and other uh, places uh, in Cairo and I wanted to, to display them in a public place and I couldn't find uh, in Egypt the right institution where this can be best viewed and um, once Mohammed al-Shahid came and told me about his project I got super excited because I felt this is the best context where these architecture drawings of Qasr al-Din could be represented. also includes in this particular case a work of contemporary art by Egyptian artist Maha Moon. The work is an hour-long video that is 
uh, a compilation of scenes from Egyptian cinema from the 1960s to the present uh, that are shot in the vicinity of the pyramids. And again, it shows how these iconic sites um, are deeply integrated into Egyptian cultural and political uh, life. The scenes uh, show uh, struggles uh, that have to do with gender, politics, uh, and many, many more uh, issues that are part of modern society. When I was um, hired to, to take care of this project, um, my approach was quite particular. I wanted to, I was very aware that uh, certain aspects of contemporary and modern Egyptian history sort of slip between the cracks. They're not represented, they're not documented. I'm um, thinking particularly of uh, the lifestyles of the middle class, uh, basically average people, normal people, the things they use. Uh, and everyday items uh, used in domestic space uh, and so on, as well as uh, signage, posters, things that um, kind of belong to the public sphere that were mass produced. Uh, the objects are used objects, and this is really important to emphasize. They are objects that have had a life before they've uh, entered the museum. They're not made to be artistic works. They're not made to be looked at uh, and not touched. They're not made uh, to be unique, uh, they are mass produced, they are part of everyday life, and this is why they show layers of, of age and use. One of my favorite objects in the collection is a salon cigarettes box. The box was made for uh, an upper class uh, kind of setting here in Egypt, uh, was specifically came out of um, a, a Jewish household in downtown Cairo, and it's from the 1940s, however, it's uh, the, the shell work is made in Egypt, yes, but the woodwork itself uh, was made in England, and then the music uh, machine in the bottom is Swiss. So here's an object that is in many ways very representative of a very particular lifestyle for a very particular class that's very anchored in a very particular geography, which happens to be downtown Cairo, but it's still an Egyptian object. And so this is kind of the more complicated example of how do you define an object as Egyptian, which in this case is by use. It was made for consumption here or it was made for the marketplace here.